Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Uh, welcome back my dear friends a very good morning good afternoon good evening to all of you wherever you are in the part of the globe and at whatever time you are seeing these lectures uh, my good name is raghunandan sengupta from the ime department at iit kanpur in india and the course which is being televised here is under the swayam lecture series and the title of the course is investment analysis and portfolio management so if you remember in the last class uh, we have uh, wrapped up the capm model the market line the security line and con consider the concept of risk adjusted interest rates and how beta can be used even though we have been discussing about the use of beta as another risk measure in place of sigma uh, we have drawn the three different uh, graphs considering returns on the y axis and in one case here standard deviation along the x axis next case it was beta or it was the covariance of that particular um, portfolio with the market and we saw in the three cases when the portfolio was efficient it always was on the market line efficient market line and you can form, form different combinations of that market along with the risk free interest rate considering whether you want to short sell or not short sell all these combinations then we slowly moved on to the point where you had two type of risk one was the risk which could not be diversified another was the risk which could be diversified and in the uh, true sense in the theoretical sense the overall risk coming from the white noise could be di diversified considering that you had held that portfolio being broken down into many different assets and then we consider that if the market was inefficient <coughs> how the inefficient portfolio will, uh, will look like on the cartesian coordinate where you measured return and a sort of risk along the x axis then we also um, gave the formula for beta when the distributions were not normal uh, in general we did mention time and again the stock prices was log normally distributed then and on before that we had considered how the returns could be calculated as ln of p2 by p1 where p1 was the price of ending price of today and p2 was the ending price of one day later on or one time period later on depending on how you want to find out the small r and we we kept mentioning time and again what was the difference between capital r and small r and how the distribution looks like and so on and so forth then in the last class uh, at the fag end we started about the utility theory and we were discussing few examples based on that which we will continue from this 15th class so this is lecture number 15 Uh, investment analysis and portfolio management under the swams lecture series and the broad topic of the lecture title would be utility theory and there would be some key points salient points discussed in this 15th uh, lecture and on the following lectures uh, the overall <coughs> lecture description of the lectures um, different top points would be about utility functions expected value of utility even though i didn't mention about expected value of utility and concept of variance as we were discussing this theoretical examples what were the property what are the properties of utility functions like non cessation risk aversion neutrality risk neutral behavior risk seeking behavior will be discussed we'll consider that what is a fair gamble based on the fair gamble how you can classify a decision maker as a person who is willing to take the risk who is indifferent and who is uh, will not willing to take the risk we'll consider the concept of marginal utility and how it can uh, give us some uh, an idea about the sense of the the risk taking property of that decision maker 
we will also consider two important concept about absolute risk conversion and relative risk conversion and why they are important we will come to that obviously there would be follow up lectures in the 16 17 but still i'll mention what would be forthcoming as we proceed we'll consider the four different utility functions the quadratic logarithmic exponential and power utility functions and what are their properties with respect to absolute risk conversion property and relative risk conversion property we'll consider the concept of certainty equivalent what it actually means when you are trying to compare utility functions we'll uh, go into in just brief details about axioms of utility functions and then we if we slowly considered other different uh, types of measures to find out the decisions we'll consider the geometric mean return why i'll come to that we'll also consider in in the stochastic sense how different safety first principle there are they would be we'll only concentrate on three how safety first principles can be simply used as a simple optimization problem where you can solve the problem to uh, know about how the portfolio can be formulated we'll consider the the safety first principle the stochastic dominance and later on go into shevichev's inequality and consider the concepts in further details and how shevichev's inequality may be markov inequality will also if time permits i'll consider that how they can be formulated as simple problems which really makes sense when you are trying to formulate a portfolio with different sorts of assets which are there and we'll keep our, our discussion lim limited to financial assets which are the stocks <coughs> so considering this other example so there will be different examples which will be uh, discussing to bring out the salient points and the key features of the utility function consider there is a match and the match whether a football match or a cricket match or whatever game is there and there are many teams and we are only going to concentrate or pay our attention to the top 2 ranking teams and consider due to some error some error by the organization organization uh, this committee the one one of the set of members in the organization committee they came up with a consider i market as one where they say give uh, points accordingly so where the wins okay this should be one uh, my uh, i should mark it as case one this is not one because that that one which i marked before on is basically the outcome we are seeing so in case one the organization team committee uh, has planned or after going through how the ranking would be given they agree that they will give a point 2 to a win point 1 to a draw and point 0 to a loss and as the the ranking system is given at the end of the day on the on the whole tournament has taken place uh, the whole committee sits down and finds out that team x has this wins 14 number draws 20 number and losses 10 in number and when they pay their attention on team y i am trying to color it with different color blue they see the wins draws and losses are 45 5 and 20 respectively for y so if i concentrate on team x and y considering case one ranking system obviously i'll try to give find out the overall rank it will be for x would be 14 to 2 plus 20 into 1 plus 10 into 0 similarly for team y it will be 45 into 2 5 into 1 20 into 0 so based on that we will have some ranking i'm going to come to that later please hang on while uh, suddenly committee the second committee which was there Uh, they say no no there is an error the rank the ranking should be done like this so they say the win draw and loss would would give points 510 so if you consider um, 
the case of x it would be 40 into 5, 20 into 1 plus 10 into 0 while for y team y it will be 45 into 5, 5 into 1 and 20 into 0. So, obviously, it will mean that uh, the two ranking methods will give us two different scores. So, let us see that. So, in case 1, so case 1 I am highlight with yellow. So, case 1 A gets 100 while B gets 95. So, the end result is A is the winner. So, A is ranked higher than B. While if I concentrate on say for example, case 2 where the ranking system was different based on the points, A gets 220, B gets 230. So, B is ranked higher than A, hence B is ranked the winner. So, the, so the reason why I, why I brought up this example was that depending on what you think would be the scoring system, the value system, the net worth, the ranking would change. That means, depending on, on different type of utility functions, even for the same person or for the same decision, there are different persons who have different utility functions. The outcome of the ranks or the scores or the values, whatever you say, would be different for different individual or would be different for different situations and that will be highlighted as we follow up with different other examples. Now, in general, if you remember in the last, uh, last few minutes of the last class, we were discussing that you can could have ranked the decision based on the expected value, you could have ranked the decision based on variance, you could have ranked the distance based on the ratio of expected value to variance, you could have ranked the the decision based on the ratio of variance to um, expected value. So, in general we will follow this nomenclature when you are considering the ranking system. So, on a general nomenclature we, we should have the expected value or the utility given by this. So, the expected value of the utility would be the summation of u w which is the realized value of the utility based on what is the value of w which is the wealth multiplied by the corresponding probability that means, is the ratio or, or the relative frequency of the number of times the outcome is favoring what we want or what is the outcome. Like say for example, utility is, is outcome is 10 and 10 is supported in 5 different cases out, the, out of 30. So, in that case relative um, frequency or probability would be 5 by 30. So, the ratio which I am now highlighting in green is basically the relative frequency of the probability based on which you can find out how many times that particular incident occurs. Now, here as I just mentioned u w is the utility function which is the which is a function of the wealth w while n w is the number of outcomes with respect to the certain level of value of w which we get. So, if you have u w 1 and the utility will be u w 1 then in that case the relative frequency will be n w 1 divided by summation of n w. In case it is w 2, w 2 means other value of wealth, in that case the utility will be u w 2 and the probability of the relative frequency will be n w 2, n is the number divided by the summation of n w and based on that you can find out the expected values. In a similar way, if, if somebody uh, has a question and obviously, as I am not able to answer that question uh, directly, but I will try to highlight it accordingly. Say for example, many of you may be thinking that in the class class I did mention about the variance, even though I did show that in the calculation um, as we were doing it, but still I like to show it theoretically that consider you have found out I will so for highlighting the issue. So, consider you have the expected value as E u. So, it is E u w or expected value and you have you want to find out the variance. So, in that case variance for u w would be equal to the summation of all the occurrences which are occurring. So, consider I, I w sorry it will be w i is equal to 1, uh, 1 to say for example, n and your utility would be given by u w i minus expected value of u w at whole square. So, for w 1 it will be u w 1 minus expected value utility whole square multiplied by sorry 
I didn't I think I I didn't uh, write it the other way suddenly it, it occurred to my mind in the last class when we were discussing I don't I completely forgot whether I written the probability one if I have not it was my mistake I apologize so I'll I'll correct it here so when it will be probability of u w 1. So, if I want to find out the variance, it will be u w 1 minus expected value of u, u whole square that difference whole square multiplied by the corresponding probability. So, if you have 10 numbers of occurrences are w, so you will have the difference of the realized value minus the expected value whole square for each of these 10 multiplied by each being multiplied by the corresponding probability. So, for u w 1 it will be a case where you the probability will, would be probability of u w 1. Similarly, for w 2 realized value being u w 2 uh, it the probability will be probability of u w 2 and based on that you can find it out. And when I did mention the ratios, so actually I meant the expected value being here and the variance being here. So, you can utilize these ratios of expected value to variance or variance to expected value and rank the decisions accordingly. So, remember for this example also what I am, I am going to discuss here for the slides would be a very simplistic notion. So, we will consider that for our simple problems, but in general it may not be true. Remember that in general utility functions cannot be negative even though uh, that is not always uh, right in the example point of view, but many functions may give negative values the expected value which is coming out there uh, that can be negative as well as some of the utilities can also be negative. For analysis to make the problem simple we may consider the value to be 0 even though in actually act, in actual case it is negative. We will see that in the example that in many of the cases. Uh, even if the value is, is negative, we will consider as 0 and proceed with the problem accordingly. And we can take negative values and solve the problems also. So, let us see a different uh, picture of, the, of, uh, of an example, where in this ca case we have two util utilities. So, utility function u w 1 I am marking with red and whatever I am going to write down for util function 1 it will be I will be using the red color. And similarly, I have um, the util function 2 which I am marking by green. So, whatever writing I do for util function 2 I would be using the green color. Now, the situation is like this you have the outcomes given in the first column which I just marked starting from 15 to 25. Then uh, the second third and the fourth row which I mark because they pertain to the first utility function I mark them as with red. So, these three columns are the first one is the wealth which I have just simply taken as arbitrary values like 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 0.5, 5. So, I am taking discrete uh, these values I could have taken discrete in this cases I am just taking values of decimals 1.52 and so on and so forth. Now, the third column are the corresponding values which I get, get based on the wealth. So, for a wealth of 1.5 if I put that in the utility function w 1 plus 1. So, just remember w 1 is just a notional fact or the writing may of writing my utilize to basically denote that is the wealth corresponding to the fact that I am putting that in the utility function which is 1. So, 1.5 being the wealth my total utility would be 1.5 plus 1 which is 2.5 so, which is right. Similarly, for, for 2 it will be 3 for 2.5 is 3.5 and all these values which where I mark a tick are the utilities based on the wealth which is given in the second column and the corresponding probability I am getting from the first column where the outcome basically gives the numbers. So, the if you see the total sum of the outcome is 100. So, 15 by divided by 100 
probability for the first um, um, row which is for the wealth of 1.5 the probability is 0.15 similarly for the second outcome which is 20 for which the utility is 3 the probability is 0.2 which is the second row. Similarly, for the third row I am just reading the values the probability is 0 0.25, 0 0.1, 0 0.05 and 0.25. Now, based on the fact that how you find out the expected value. So, if I multiply the corresponding third and the fourth row which is here. So, based on that if I want to find out that means I am trying to find out the expected value I put E 1 which corresponding to, to the case where I have the util function as 1. So, in that case I, I multiply U w 1 multiplied this is the multiplication sign probability of U w 1. So, they keep changing U w 1 1 U w 1 2 and so on and so forth for all values of 1. So, if I multiply them I get a value of 3.825 that means I am multiplying as I said the third and the fourth column. Now, similarly when I utilize the util function 2 everything remains the same concept wise. So, the fourth fifth and the sixth column are the corresponding values pertaining to wealth w 2 the utility based on the wealth u w 2 and the probability p w 2. And for the outcomes being and the wealth values I have been say, say taken as same 1.52, 2.5, 3.55 in order to do a better comparison between this utility based on that I get the utilities. So, 1.5 the utility would be 1.5 square which is the second utility 1.5 square plus 1.5. So, I will get it is 2.25 plus 1.5 I get 3.75. Similarly, for the second value 2 whole square is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. Similarly, 2.5 whole square plus 2.5 is 8.75. Correspondingly, I get the utilities as the, the other values are 12.75 and 30. And the corresponding probabilities based on the fact the outcomes are the same as it was for first case. Hence, the probabilities always also remain the same. So, when I utilize this second to last last column the second last column I mean I multiply them again I get the utility for u 2 same formula here I am using u w 2 multiplied by, by the probability of u w 2 for all values. So, when I do that I get a value of 12.69. So, we can have a different decision depending on the utility which you are seeing. So, the situations are same, but we get different answer as the utility uh, function changes as I just mentioned when we finish the last slide. Now, let us change the example a little bit where I consider there are two decisions and there are two utilities. So, what are these utilities? The first one I multiply, multiply uh, I put a tick mark in red the utility function is w 1 again this w 1 w 2 are specific to the utility function 1 and 2 the, the way they are being denoted there is uh, the but actually w actually means the wealth. So, the first one I mark as as in using the red tick mark and the second one I mark using the green tick mark. So, which is also which the first one is a linear utility function second one is not a linear utility function. Now, for this two utility functions I have two different decisions one is decision A which I circle with yellow and other one is basically the decision B which I mark in dark blue. Now, there is a reason why I mark them and I and make a note of that. So, you will you will notice that in many of these decisions A there is a yes where it is possible and there are no. So, first one is yes, second one is no, third one is no, fourth is yes, fifth is yes, the last one is no. Similarly, when I go to decision B, 
correspondingly you have no first then yes then yes third one then a no then a no then a yes so what does it mean so if i now go to the first column which are which is the outcome so let me mark the outcome using with light green so this is the outcomes which means that if you look very carefully so for the time being forget about the second column forget about the third column forget about the fourth column so if i check decision a it implies that if it is yes that means out of the total corresponding outcomes which favors a it is possible that the first row where you will have a certain utility what is that utility i'll come to that within few minutes this is possible that means this is a yes here similarly if you consider the second one where the outcome is value 3 it is not possible for a decision a similarly four outcome which is the third row is not possible for decision a six outcome is possible nine outcome is possible and five outcome is not possible for decision a similarly if i pay attention to decision a and the outcomes we see that 8 is not possible 3 i am only reading the values which are in the outcome 8 is not possible 3 is possible 4 is possible 6 and 9 is not possible while 5 is possible now what does that mean so in the sense let us first take say for example the uh, wealth so the wealths i take discrete values starting from 4 to 9 so corresponding to 4 to 9 the utilities which i will get are for the first utility it is linear for the first one so it will be 4 minus 5 which is minus 1 but if you remember i had said in one of the example we can consider which is minus we will consider as zero so that's what we have done zero then 5 minus 5 is zero which is right 6 minus 1 6 minus 5 1 6 7 minus 5 2 8 minus 5 3 and 9 minus 5 is 4 so all the utilities based for on the fact that is the utility function 1 the values are given as 0 0 1 2 3 4 similarly when i go to the second utility which i have marked in dark green the utility is non linear function so the values for the first case where it is given 2.34 why how 2.34 is obtained it is twice into 4 which is the first value minus 4 to the power 1.25 the value which i get is 2.34 the second value you wealth is 5 so it is 5 into 2 10 10 minus 5 to the power 1.25 i get a value of 2.52 similarly third one 2.60 2.61 next one 2.54 the next one the last one being 2.41 so i get the utilities now there are two decisions two utilities so let us compare them so i am trying to basically utilize utility function 1 in both case of utility of decision a and decision b and see that which decision is ranked higher similarly i'll change the util utility function go to the second one and utilize the second utility function to rank the decisions a and b so let us do that for the case when i'm utilizing utility function 1 for case a it will be for the first decision a it is yes but the utility is zero so it will be zero multiplied by 8 divided by 8 plus 6 plus 9 because yes outcome is 8 and how many such yeses are there are three yeses and what is the value is 8 plus 6 plus 9 so the relative frequency 8 divided by 8 plus 6 plus 9 so when i go to the second instant where decision a is possible i see the outcome value um, uh, was basically 6 so the corresponding probability would be 6 divided by how many such outcomes which are possible which is 8 plus 6 plus 9 the probability comes out to be the one which i am just circling and marking and the corresponding utility is the value 2 which i basically see here this is 2 which is possible and the first one was basically zero which was possible similarly the uh, the other one in, um, uh, where it is yes for decision a the utility is 3 which i just marked 
and the corresponding probability is 9 divided by 8 plus 6 plus 9 hence the overall expected value of that utility based on uh, for the case for case a or decision a is 1.69 similarly when i shift r focus to the case when we are concentrating on decision b what are those cases where it is yes so the first one is basically zero why it is zero because we have seen it it was basically based on the fact no it's not zero my my mistake so i, I have marked it wrong here So, um, uh, we see it is yes which is 2.52, it will be the case for the utility function 2, I should be coming to the second column, uh, wait I jumped one step. So, when I am considering uh, utility function 1, <coughs> the values would have been 0 for this case which is yes, I was right because it is yes here and what is the outcome it is 3 and how many such outcomes are favoring it it is basically the case 3 then the case 6 and the case um, uh, 9 you know it's it will be wait 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 it will be the case wait for 1 okay so it will be 0 into 3 okay so it will be 0 into 3 which was possible because there is a yes here 4 is possible hence it's a yes here and the last one is basically 5 so the overall relative frequency is 3 divided by 4 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 which i am just marking here and why the corresponding utility is 0 because we have seen the utility for the case where the outcome is 3 is 0 so, which I just put a mark blue here and others correspondingly are second case is 1 utility the relative frequency is 4 divided by 3 plus 4 plus 5 which is here right and the last case is the outcome a utility being 4 outcome being 5. So, it is 4 multiplied by the relative frequency which is 5 plus divided by 3 plus 4 plus 5. So, once I find out the expected value, the value comes out to be 2. In that case, my decision B based on the fact that I am utilizing utility function 1 which is linear, B, B would be ranked higher than A. This is what is the answer for the first combination of decision A, decision B, utility function 1. Let us change, change the utility function to 2. So, the values are I will be utilizing uh, the column which is marked in green color, but because that corresponds to utility function 2. And for decision A, we have seen yes for the first case, yes for the fourth case, and yes for the fifth case. So, what are these? yes is 2.34 utility based on the fact that your outcome is is given um, uh, for 8 and and wealth is 4 so hence the utility has been calculated by the concept 2 into 4 minus 4 to the power 1.25 so that value comes out to be 2.34 or i put up a tick mark and what is the relative frequency so we see yes cases for the case where you have outcomes as 8 outcomes as uh, given as uh, 6 because the fourth one is yes and the ninth the outcome is 9 which is the second last one is yes. So, the overall relative frequency is 8 divided by 8 plus 6 plus 9 which is here. When I go to the second one the overall uh, value which is yes for decision A is 2.61 for the outcome 6. So, it will be 2.61 multiplied by 6 divided by 8 plus 6 plus 9 and the third one is basically given for the outcome is 9, wealth is 8, utility is 2.54 and the corresponding value is given. Hence, the expected value is 2.50.
So, that is based on the fact that when I am utilizing um, uh, the util function uh, 2 for the decision A, when I change to B, so for B it is yes, the second case is yes, third case is yes and the last case is yes. So, these values are given by 2.54, 2.60 and 2.41 corresponding problem relative frequencies are 3 divided by 3 plus 4 plus 5, 4 divided by 3 plus 4 plus 5 and 5 divided by 3 plus 4 plus 5. 5. When I find out the expected value, the expected value comes out to be 2.50 also. So, in this case the person would be indifferent between A and B, they are the same. So, you see depending on the context of the case, context on how the ranking system is done on context based how the utility function changes, you can get different utility function values and similarly obviously, the variance will be different. So, let us come to a very simple example. So, consider a venture capitalist is considering two possibilities. In the first case, it is a government treasury bills, T bills which cost rupees 6 lakhs, while in the second case it is an investment for which there are three outcomes. The outcome values are given as 10 lakhs, 5 lakhs and 1 lakh and the corresponding probabilities are 0 0.2, 0 0.4 and 0 0.4. And we see for these two cases the utility function is given as I will mark it as as w to the power half. So, how do we find out and rank them? It is very simple. So, when I come to the first case which is the government one, the uh, there is only one decisions probability is, is 1, hence the utility would be given for the first case expected value. I use the blue, blue color, it will be given by square root because that is w to the power half square root of 6 lakhs which is equal to square root of 6 into 10 to the power 5 and of the second case the expected value would be there are three outcomes. So, it will be square root of 10 lakhs multiplied by 0 0.2 is the probability, second one it is 5 into 10 to the power 5 because 5 lakhs multiplied by 0 0.4 and the last value is 1 lakh multiplied by 4, 0.4. So, if you see this then for the first alternative the value is 776 which I just mark it here. So, this is the value which you will get because probability is 1 here, they are only outcome. And for the second case, when I find out this expected value, the value comes out to be 609. Hence, the first alternative would be preferred. So, if you change the util, util function, the answer may change, or if you change the outcome, the answer may change. If you change the probability, the answer may change. So, would the above problem gives a, give us a different answer if we used an utility function of the form u w is equal to w to the power half plus c. So, in many many examples you can see that when you are adding a constant not inside w remember constant is being added separately then the ranking system for the other case which you just saw if you keep adding utilities technically it would not so, if I add w here, so it is square root of 6 lakhs plus some c value. Similarly, if I had square root of 10 lakhs plus c value and obviously, 0.2 is multiplied to both the terms, then it is 5, 5 lakhs plus c value both the terms being multiplied by 0.4, then 1 lakh plus c value because 
that c value is outside the square root whole both the terms being multiplied by 0.4. So, in the left hand side you have c on the right hand side you have 0.2 c plus 0.4 c plus 0.4 c which is also c. So, it would not make the, that difference, but if you wealth is changing by that amount c and that comes inside the square root obviously, it will change. Now, let us take a utility function which is logarithmic, logarithmic and we will come to the logarithmic utility functions later on. So, here is the logarithmic utility function u, u p I am using wealth as p not w. So, ln of p which is Napierian log and we assume 6 days prices is just a thought out simple example the days are given in the first column. What is given in the second column which is to be explained that these are the prices end of the day prices and I assume that if I take instances if I keep clicking photographs or take taking a snapshot how the prices are fluctuating I find out out of the 100 number of days 35 of them are the cases where the ending of the day price is 1000. Similarly, 20 of them out of 100 the ending price is 975. Similarly, 950 being for 10 days, 1050 being for 15 days, 925 being for 5 days and 1025 for 15 days. So, these are the number of outcomes which I consider the total being 100. When I convert the prices which are given in the second column which I am marking with now with blue. So, if I use the utility function ln of p, so ln of 1000 is 6.91, ln of 975 is 6.88 and if I keep finding on the ln values, the corresponding values as I go row wise for the third column they are 6.86, 6.96, 6.83 and 6.93 that means for the different prices. The probability based on, on the number of outcomes would be for the first case 35 by 100 which is 0.35 and the corresponding other probabilities would be as I keep reading the row wise based on the concentration which I am paying on the last column the values are 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.15. 0 0.05 and 0 0.15. So, if I find out the expected value, so expected value would basically be calculated like this utility multiplied by multiplied by the corresponding probabilities. So, I keep multiplying them. So, 6.91 into 0 0.35, 6.18 into 0 0.2, 6.86 into 0 0.1 and so on and so forth. So, if I add them up the value comes out to be 6.91 that is the utility based on the decision. If I take a utility function which is p to the power 1 fourth or w to the power 1 fourth the corresponding utility as I find out would come out to be 33.63. So, you change the utility functions you change see a change in the value. Now, what are the general properties of utility function which would be important for us to discuss? So, there would be two important points. One is the concept of non cessation that means more I give it to you more you want. Theoretically that is not possible Be say for example, if I consider the demand a person has or uh, for an appetite for any good food or anything. So, more I give him, him to her. So, obviously after a certain level the satiation point or the demand for that product or that good should decrease, but we will consider in the theoretical sense the non satiation property to be true as that means more I give it to you more you want. So, let me continue reading it non satiation means the first restriction placed on the utility function is it is consistent with more being preferred to less. This means that for two certain investments if I take the um, uh, the values of the largest outcome which is u, it will always be u w 1 that means the utility for the second case where wealth is higher would be utility would be higher than the wealth for the lower case. Technically what it boils down to is the fact that the first derivative is greater than 0 and it will be utilized later on also. So, rate of change of the utility function with respect to w would be greater than 0 or positive. What are the three 
subsets corresponding to the fact that they belong to the second property. So, it is if we consider the investor or the decision maker perception of absolute risk, then we will basically have these three concepts that is a risk aversion property, a risk neutrality property, neutral property and the property of, of a person who is risk seeking. So, let us consider an example to highlight this second set of properties. So, consider this is a fair gamble. So, fair gamble in the sense you have a coin and uh, the coin has investment 2 with probability half and investment 0 with probability half. So, this is a simple unbiased coin which we see and on the right hand side we have we do not invest and uh, the over and the probability is 1 that means for any outcome the probability being 1 that means a coin which is biased that means both heads. So, in that case uh, say for example, for the Indian uh, people uh, or the Indian uh, audience who are seeing this, if you remember in the film Shole, the coin was there where both heads were used. So, consider that as an example and if I consider probability as 1 and do not invest and if I pay attention to this problem on the left hand side a fair gamble probability half and half outcome 2 and 0 on the right hand side is an biased coin with probability 1 and do not invest. So, if I concentrate here the case would be that the expected value for the fair gamble would be 2 into half plus 0 into half and for the right hand side which is a fixed event the probability will be 1 into 1. So, in both the cases the expected values would be 1. So, now if you ask a person that what which one will he or she choose and if the person says for this example only if the person says that I would rather choose the fair gamble and not the sure event on the right hand side the person's decision can also would have been could have been the person is indifferent between these two decisions and the third case can be the person wants to take the fair the sure decision rather than the fair gamble. So, that would have given you a hint that the first person is looking even if the expected values are the same in the three cases the first person is looking at the outcome that means, he is willing to take the risk and win a value of 2, but also it is true that if the outcome 2 does not come he makes a loss of 0, but he is willing to take the risk in order to make that extra gain. So, we can in a very simple sense rudimentary sense say the person is willing to take the risk. The second case where the person is indifferent that means, he is indifferent between the fair gamble and, and, and the sure event that means, he is only concentrating on the expected value. So, between these two cases uh, um, that is the fair gamble and the sure event he sees that the expected value is 1 and he says for him or her it is 1 and he or she says that I am indifferent between these two decisions. The third case can be the person is wants to avoid this because he is sure that if he takes the first one first fair gamble they can be an instance or outcome where the, the outcome is 0 with a probability half, but for the sure event he knows always he will get a value of 1. Now, the question can be that uh, can a certain person's overall idea that he or she wants to avoid risk or he or she wants to take the risk or he or she is basically indifferent to risk would it change as the situation changes? Yes, it can be. Say for example, uh, for the first case consider the person who he wants to take the risk. So, consider for the time being that rather than the values being 2 and 0, let me increase these values which I have just marked with green by the quantum of 10 to the power 5. So, probability of half he will invest and win is 2 into 10 to the power 5 for the fair gamble, the other outcome for the fair gamble being with the probability half the value is 0 into 10 to the power 5. 
So, in that case also the overall expected value now can be found out it comes out to be 10 to the power 5 that means 2 into 10 to the power 5 multiplied by half plus 0 into 10 to the power 5 multiplied by half which is fine. Now, if you basically do the same thing for the shear event, so the overall um, um, value with the person would get is 1 into 10 to the power 5 multiplied by 1 that is the probability here also the expected value is 10 to the power half. But in this case the person who wanted to take the risk now would basically think twice because he is saying that he if he, he will win 2 to the power 5, 2 into 10 to the power 5, but now he, his overall attitude is now becoming a little bit more um, risky, less risky because he thinks that if the value 0 comes then uh, he loses everything. So, he may shift his stance from being a risk uh, lover to maybe a case where he is indifferent or maybe to the other extreme he, he or she would basically be a person who would try to avoid risk. So, if we change the stakes the overall situation depending on the example would give you different answer for the same person as he as he or she sees this picture unfold in, in front of him or her and makes the decision based on these three properties which I just mentioned was under the second characteristic which was person who wants to avoid risk, person who wants to take the risk and the person who is indifferent to taking that risk. So, here I have just marked it in a very simple sense. So, the nomenclature is like this. So, on the left hand side for bullet point 1, 2 and 3 they are the same thing that means it is utility function for investment 1 multiplied by probability for the investment 1 plus utility function for I 2 multiplied by probability of I 2. So, these are for the case which are the fair gamble or the gamble where there are two outcomes. And on the right hand side which I now marked in blue are the sure event u d 1 is basically d 1 is the, the case where the outcome is fixed and they are multiplied by the probability 1. Now, if you see this sign, so if the person is willing to take the sure event obviously as I said if you remember the person is risk averse he wants to run away from this he does not he or she does not want to be a risk indifferent person also. If there is an equality sign which is in the second bullet point the person is indifferent between the sure event and the gamble and for the third case which I am now highlighting if it is greater than sign on to the left which means the person is willing to take the risk. So, whatever I discussed in the last example for the fair gamble have been in a more or less very simple sense been written in the equational format. Now, how do we consider the property of risk aversion, risk um, um, loving property and risk indifferent property. So, we will see that we will use the second derivative how another class characteristics by which we can classify a risk averse person, risk neutral person and risk seeking person is this which are for the person who is risk averse the second derivative would be less than 0. Why it is coming to that let me highlight within few minutes. For the case where the person is risk neutral which I now mark in blue the second derivative will be 0 and the last case being for the person who is risk seeker the second derivative would be 0 greater than zero, second derivative would be greater than 0. So, for risk averse person second derivative is less than 0 risk neutral person the second derivative is equal to 0 and for a risk seeking person the second derivative is greater than 0 and as I mentioned few seconds back we will see in very simple sense how it can be explained very easily. So, here are the graphs uh, there is no sacrosanct concept that why they are starting from a, a non zero value on the y axis no that, that, that does not um, hold true here I have just drawn it in order to explain. 
Now, what we draw on the y axis is utility and what we draw on the y w axis uh, on x axis is wealth w. Now, let us see the characteristics the first one if you see this graph which I am now highlighting again with green the graph increases, but the increase slowly starts decreasing. So, if I concentrate on the rate of change consider I am utilizing in both the cases uh, the black line. So, if you see that means the graph goes like the dy dx slowly slope falls. So, this is a graph for the case if you see let me go back to the last slide it is false which means I see it is the risk aversion property. If I come to the middle one blue one the straight line. So, if I draw the graph, so at any point the line remains fixed. So, there is no fall, no increase, it is straight. So, it is second derivative is basically 0. So, this is the second bullet point which is the risk neutral property. Finally, for the case where the util function is increasing like this. So, if I concentrate for some of the points here, you see the graph goes like this that is increasing. So, it increases like this. So, the second derivative if I concentrate and it is basically greater than 0 and that corresponds to the case of the risk seeking person. So, the marginal utility function looks like a convex concave function for the risk averse person. So, it is concave function risk averse. So, falling like this. So, the marginal utility looks neither like a concave nor like the config convex function is the risk neutral property which is the straight line. And the marginal rate if I consider it looks like a convex function hence it is a risk seeking property which looks like this which I have already seen. So, I did not want to go back to the slides. So, the marginal rates is increasing as a decreasing rate. So, it is increasing, but slowly decreasing. So, that would be I mentioned is a decreasing rate increasing at a decreasing rate which is a risk aversion property. Let me again draw the graph. The marginal rate is de increasing as the constant rate, rate is not changing, slope fixed is a risk neutral property. This is the graph, and the case when it is increasing at an increasing rate is a risk seeking property, is a increasing graph like this. Again, I drew it here, not go, did not go back to the previous slides. So, this is the risk avoider wants to avoid risk. This line the graphs are going this direction. So, that is always a risk avoider and obviously, remember I have u w and w along the y axis and x um, uh, u w in the y axis and w in the x axis and I just mark w 1 
w1 plus 1 w1 plus 2 in just in order to differentiate that if i consider the risk neutral property it is a straight line as it is i mark uw along the y axis w along the x axis and another w1 w1 plus 1 w1 plus 2 as they are marked just to demonstrate and finally i have the risk seeking property graph is increasing increases like this the tan goes like this in this direction and again i am measuring u w and w along the y and x axis so here w1 w1 plus 1 and w1 plus 2 are marked accordingly so with this i'll end the 15th lecture and considering the more parts to be covered in utility function i'll cover it accordingly have a nice day and thank you very much